What's up Video Fort Nation? This is Video Fort Ruan with another awesome Video Fort tutorial. And in today's tutorial, I'm going to show you guys how to create this effect. So I'm going to show you guys how to do this in After Effects without using any third party plugins. Right, so let's jump into After Effects and I'm going to bring in my clip and I'm going to drag the clip into a new composition. And it's just a clip of me walking with the camera, I actually used a glide cam to smooth it out a bit. And as you can see, this clip is quite uh, flat looking. So first of all, I'm going to add a curves adjustment to this. So add a curves and let's just give it some contrast. Maybe you can actually overdo it a bit because you can always undo it afterwards. And then you want to pre-compose this. So right click pre-compose. Uh, let's just give it a name, mm, clip and move all attributes, click on OK. All right, so next up you want to camera track uh, this shot. So go to your effects and type in camera, drag that onto your clip or onto your composition, and then just give it a few minutes to finish. And I'll just pause the video quickly and I'll see you guys now. So once your camera track is completed, you can just scrub through it and look at your tracking markers to make sure it's looking good. So what you can do is just go to a spot and when you mouse over, you'll see this little red circle. So you want to try and get that um, onto the plane where you want to add your 3D grid. So I'm just going to go with that one right there. So what you want to do is right click on that and then you want to go to create solid and camera. So that will basically create a 3D camera. We can move that up a bit and it's also going to create a 3D solid. Uh, so if you scrub through now, that solid should actually stick to the plane where you're going to add the grid. Okay, next up, you want to create a new solid and we're just going to call that 3D grid. And you can leave all the settings as default, click on OK. And then you want to hide that for now, um, just move it down a bit. And what you want to do is you want to pre-compose that 3D grid. So right click pre-compose and let's just call it uh, 3D grid comp that should be fine click on OK and then you want to make that comp a 3d layer like that okay next you want to go to your uh, track solid the one that the tracker created um, go to your transform and click on position copy that so go uh, command C or control C go to your 3d comp that you created go to transform select position paste that and you also want to do the same with the orientation so go back to your track solid Go to orientation, copy that, go to your 3D comp, orientation, and paste that. Right, so what you want to do now is you want to unhide your 3D uh, grid comp, and then you want to delete your track solid. So if you scrub through now, you should see your new solid that's actually in a comp. Um, it should be on the floor and tracked to your footage. Okay, next up, you want to move your composition kind of into the middle of the plane where you want to create your grid. So just click on it and then you can just position it by using these little arrows. So I'm just going to try and position it to the center and maybe a little bit further away. So maybe something like that. Okay, so that's going to be the center point of the grid. So as you can see, that comp is quite small. So what you want to do is go into your 3D grid comp, double click on it, and then right click, go to composition settings, and let's just scale this up a bit. Um, let's try 3500 by 3500. Okay, click on OK, and let's go to this solid, right click on it, and go to transform, go to fit to comp, so that just fills that frame. And let's go back to our main clip and you can see it's a little bit bigger, but actually it's still quite small. Let's go back into that comp and just resize it again. Uh, maybe let's try 4,500. And let's just resize the solid. So right click transform, fit to comp, and let's go see. Okay, it's still quite small, but what you can do, um, you can actually just scale it. So for this tutorial, I'm just gonna scale it and I'm not really going to worry about that, but try and get this as close as possible to the size um, without scaling it. But for this tutorial, I'm just going to scale it. Okay, the next step is we want to create our grid effect. So go into your 3D grid composition, and then you can actually delete this solid. Then you want to right click, go to new and click on shape layer. 
And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna click on uh, the polygon tool. So you can just click and drag to resize it. And when you hold in shift, it will just align it horizontally and then release and you've got your shape. So go into your Polystar 1 under that shape layer and under Polystar Path 1, change your points to 6. So we've got a hexagon. Okay, the next step is click on the Polystar, click on Add, and we're going to add a repeater effect to that. And when you expand that, let's change this to, let's just make it 5 for now, and let's just zoom in here a little bit so we can see what's happening. And then what you want to do is go into Transform for the repeater, and just change your position, and that will actually offset uh, these hexagons. So what you want to do is you just want to try and offset them so there's a slight space um, between them, like that. And then inside that repeater one, let's change the copies to, let's make it 20 for now. And then you can actually click on the shape layer and with your arrow keys, just move them up a bit. So something like that. Okay, so what you want to do is you want to fill this comp with these hexagons. So we're going to go back into that Polystar uh, 1, click on it again, and we're going to add another repeater. Okay, so under Repeater 2, expand that, go to Transform, and then we want to play with the position again. So the last value, that will actually bring it down a bit, and then also the first value will slide it across. So what you want to do is you want to try and position them so they kind of like this, with a space between them, up and down, so maybe something like that looks good. And we're gonna make the copies also 20, and that will repeat them 20 times downwards. Okay, next, click on your shape layer again and try and just move this um, so that they will actually fill your composition. Something like that. And let's go back to our main clip to see what's happening here. Okay, so as you can see, we've got our grid, um, very ugly looking grid going on. So let's go back into that 3D grid comp. So let's just change the color quickly. So go to your fill and here you can actually set the color. So let's make this white for now. And let's go to the stroke and we can actually change the opacity down to zero because we don't want to have a stroke around them. Okay, let's go back to the clip and you can see we've got a 3D grid going on. Okay, next thing you want to do is we want to pre-compose the shape layer inside the 3D grid composition. And the reason we're going to pre-compose it again is because we want to add a mask to this shape layer. Um, and you can't really add a mask to just the shape layer, you have to pre-compose it. So right-click on that, go to pre-compose, and let's just call this hexagon, and press enter. And then if you go inside this comp, this will have your hexagon shape layer. If you go into this one, this will just have the hexagon comp. And then obviously you have your main comp. So go into the last or the hexagon composition where we can actually change the shape layer. And I'm going to adjust the size of the shape layer. So if you move this down, you'll see that your hexagons will become smaller. So let's make this 50% for now. And now we need to fill the composition again. So let's just expand our shape. Go to Contents, go to Polystar, go to Repeater 1 and Repeater 2. And let's maybe make this 30 copies and down also 30 copies. Okay, as you can see, we've got a little gap there. So all you have to do is click on your shape and just move it to the left. Make sure it folds your composition. So you can play around with the size and all of those things, but for now, this is looking all right. So let's go back to our clip and you can see we've got some grids going on here. So now we can actually start with the revealing of these grids. So let's say we want to start revealing these hexagons at about three seconds and have them disappear again at around five seconds. So let's go to three seconds and go to our middle composition. And then we want to add a mask to this composition. So I'm going to go to the ellipse tool and I'm going to double click that. So it's going to create a perfect circle for me. And then you can up the feather to around 250. Let's see if that works. And if we go back to our clip, you can see we've got a feather effect going on there. Okay, so go to your middle comp again, and we're gonna change the mask expansion. We're gonna put it into the negative values. I'm just gonna change the quality to around thirds. 
because you'll see it will start to slow down once you're working with these big uh, compositions. So let's just drag this mask expansion down and you want to take it down to about minus 1700. Okay, maybe a bit more, maybe minus 2000. Okay, maybe even more, minus 2400. Okay, that should be fine. And we're going to create a keyframe there. Then you want to go to five seconds and you want to expand this again all the way, maybe to around a thousand, just to fill the comp again. Okay, let's go back to our main comp. I'm just going to change this to a third for quality and speed reasons. So if we play this back, you'll see that the grid will appear. Okay, so now we want to add another mask in the center to kind of make it go away again. Um, so let's go to the center comp again. Okay, so for the second mask, you want to click on that composition again, double click on the ellipse tool to create a circle mask again. And then what we will do is we'll copy the keyframes from the first mask, just copy those and go to your mask to paste them. And then you can just offset them about halfway like this, if this makes any sense. And then the second mask, you'll change to subtract. So if we scrub through this, you'll see we've got our first mask and then the second mask will start and that will fade out again. Okay, so on the second mask, let's change our feather to around 250. Okay, so that's looking good. So let's go to our main comp. And if you play this back, you'll see we've got the mask expanding, second mask expanding, and it's all gone. So. One problem I'm seeing here is we've got these hard edges on the side of this comp. So let's get rid of that. So go back into your 3D grid comp and you want to add a third mask. So let's do another circle mask. And let's expand that a bit. Okay, and then you want to change that third mask to intersect. Okay, and then you also want to change the feather amount. Let's make that 250 as well. Let's just see if that's going to work. Then we'll actually round off the whole comp. So if we go back to our main clip, let's just play that back quickly. I'm just going to turn this down to quarter for speed reasons. So you'll see it will expand. And we still have some hard edges here, so we can fix that now. So go back into that comp. So on your third mask, you can just expand this inwards a bit, just so you don't see any hard edges on the side. Go back to your comp. And if you play this back now, we should not see any hard lines anymore. Okay, next what we can do is we can change the opacity of your grid. So just click on your 3D grid, press T, and let's bring the opacity down to around 70% maybe, uh, maybe even less, maybe like that. Okay, and now we can play with the colors as well. So go into your final or your shape um, composition and go into contents, go to full and let's change it to like a green. Okay, something like that, go to your clip. So let's just change the quality to full again so we can see what's going on. And I'm just quickly gonna RAM preview this. Right, so there you go, a 3D grid effect in After Effects. So thanks for watching another video for tutorial. In the comment section below, please let us know what you liked and what you didn't like and what other types of tutorials you want us to create for you. At VideoFort, our mission is to provide you with quality content and creative freedom. And for more information, please visit videofort.com.